Earth dodges some small solar storm bullets on the front side, while on the far side of the sun, region 3697 is at it again. Those stories and more are in this week's Spotlight. The sun has us in hurry up and wait mode this week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see there really isn't a lot of activity in Earth view. We have the big players, region 3712 and then region 3716. Those are the ones that are giving us the most trouble along with region 3713. In fact, on the 17th, you can see region 3712 fires off an M-class flare right there. And if you weren't paying attention, you might have thought that this big halo, this asymmetric halo actually came from this region because it happened around the same time, along with this other halo that you can see here. This is actually the one that occurred almost simultaneously with this big M flare. And you're thinking, wow, that tiny little thing saw, shot some Earth-directed solar storms? Nope, the sun's fooling us again. These are far-sighted halos, which means the solar storms are being shot away from Earth. And you can guess who that player is that's causing these things to go off. Yep, it's region 3697. This is that old region that gave us that G5 level solar storm way back when, the one that's been hammering Mars as well. And it looks like it might have a companion now, perhaps in region 3691. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But these regions look like they're surviving their far side passage. So expect to see them soon. In fact, as we take a look at the sticks light curves from Solar Orbiter, this is like a solar flare monitor you can actually see we had an X3 class flare from that region, as well as a couple high M class flares. So it's definitely still big flare players and a lot of big flares going on and radio blackouts going on on the sun's far side. And that's what's about to rotate back into Earth view. And again, how do we know that? Well, as we ask uh, the STIX instrument to tell us where it's seeing this on the disk, you can see this as the STIX instrument looks at the sun from the far side. This region here is where it's seeing all those solar flares. And yep, that's exactly where we expect region 3697 to be right about now. So this region is going to still be giving us some trouble, it looks like, for the third rotation in a row, if you can believe that. Outside of that, as we return to our Earth-facing disk, well, we've actually been dodging a lot of bullets. First, we had this big filament erupt here. Whoosh, you can see it there. Then we had a filament up here in the northwest that erupts in another beautiful display. You can see it whoosh right there. Once again, not Earth directed. Then we had yet another filament launch down here. You'll see it go whoosh right there, not Earth directed. And then finally reaching 3718, bam, right there, fires off a, 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 a small M-class flare along with uh, what looks to be an Earth directed solar storm, but nope, that solar storm looks like it gets sucked back into the, to the sun. It doesn't look like anything escaped. So we are just dodging bullets left and right. Meanwhile, we also have this filament here. This is looking a bit dicey. It is passing through the Earth strike zone now, and it looks like it could erupt. If it does, it could very well be an Earth-directed solar storm launch. So that's something we're paying very close attention to. Outside of that, we also have some fast wind from this coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days. But, you know, we're only expecting maybe active conditions from that. So right now, Field day looks like it might actually be pretty good for everyone. But we do have to worry about these contenders rotating in from the sun's far side. In fact, as we take a look at the JSOC HMI Helioseismology far sided viewer, you can see in gray all the players from the front side. You can see region 37, 12, 13, and 16, for example. But you can also see in the gold, which is the far side, you can see region 3697 definitely surviving its far side passage and 3691 as well. And these regions look like they're getting very close to rotating back into Earth view. You can see there might even be a new region here that's extended 3697. So we'll see what this region looks like as it rotates back into Earth view over the next three days or so, which sadly is right about when we're having field day. So what's likely going to happen is as we move in through the weekend, we're going to start seeing noising rising up on the bands. Hopefully it won't be too bad. Hopefully we won't start seeing big solar flares, but it's going to be close. So let's just keep our fingers crossed. And now switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week. We are anticipating some fast solar wind from that corona hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is giving us, uh, we're expecting about active conditions starting around Saturday uh, with up to about a 35% chance of a major storm. 
But again, this is at high latitudes. It shouldn't be too bad. It's not like any of the big uh, storms, you know, that that launch towards us. And that fast solar wind is not expected to really wallop us too hard. So for field day, could be a little bit problematic, but more at the nighttime hours than the daytime hours. And now as we switch to our mid-latitude aurora, well, we're looking for the same conditions. We are going to be on a wind watch, and then we're expecting the fast wind hitting on Saturday. But we're really just going to be expecting unsettled conditions for the rest of this week. We've got about a 10% chance of minor storm conditions, and I've uh, uh, extended that out to uh, Sunday. But again, as long as we don't get any big solar storm launches like that filament that's going through the Earth strike zone, it looks like field day might not be too bad, especially around mid-latitudes and especially during the daytime. Now, as we switch to our uh, solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are sitting around 190s right now for solar flux. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good range. We're also going to be riding possibly up back into the 200s here over the next few days as those old regions begin to rotate into Earth view. Let's hope that doesn't completely happen until we get through field day. Meanwhile, we're expecting moderate noise on the bands. NOAA is giving us about a 55 to 60 percent chance of uh, M class flares. This is at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout. I'm expecting that to move at least up to about 65% as we move into the early part of next week. Plus, we're sitting at about a 5 to 10% chance of X class flares over the next couple of days. And I expect that's also going to rise here pretty quickly as these new regions rotate into Earth view. Uh, but for the most part, things should be about the same as they've been. Maybe a bit more noise on the bands than you've been dealing with over the last week, but not too bad for field day. Now, as we switch to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, Everything is in the green when it comes to radiation storms. We're sitting at the D1 normal range. That's at flight level 360 for you aviators. This is also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. NOAA's giving us about a 5 to possibly 10% chance of radiation storms over the next few days. And this is because we have region 37, 12, and 16 rotating to the sun's uh, west limb. That always seems to up the chances. Plus, we do have those new regions, or rather those returning regions, rotating into Earth view here uh, as we move into the early part of next week. And that could also very well rise the risk for radiation storms. So expect things to be reasonably calm, especially for you frequent flyers and you air crew. There shouldn't be a huge risk, but you'll always want to keep your eye on those ICAO advisories in case these conditions change. So the space weather is remaining quiet, at least for the moment. Now, we do have that coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone over the next couple days. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could get a bit of a show. Aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, maybe right when the influence of that fast solar wind hits Earth, we could get a little bit of a bump up of aurora, but only if you're dedicated should you chase because it's not going to last all that long. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, I know this weekend is field day, and right now it looks like conditions will pretty much stay as they have been over the last few days. However, the tell is going to be whether the region 3697, as it rotates into Earth view here over the next maybe three days or so, whether that's going to impact field day, you're likely going to no notice a little bit of noise on the bands rising. Hopefully you won't notice any big R3 level radio blackouts until after field day is over. At least that's what I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for. Now, you GPS users, well, you know, we don't have a lot going on on the front side. We have those R1 to R2 level radio blackouts, but they're not too bad. So that's going to give you some issues near dawn and near dusk. And then we do have that fast solar wind that'll give us a little bit of aurora on Earth's night side over the next couple of days. So as long as you steer clear of those regions, anywhere near Aurora on the sun's far or Earth's night side or anywhere near dawn and dusk, you should be pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.